Namaste. Today, we shall take a look at an important neurological concept that is very, very useful in our physical practice of the Hatha Yoga techniques. We have in our brain that amazing contraption that lies between our ears that is seldom used by most human beings today. We have within that the potentiality for amazing integration and cross connectivity. What I am talking about is something called the somatotopic map or the homunculus. And this homunculus is an artistic representation of the neuronal areas that do certain functions. In the brain, there is the central sulcus and this central sulcus is preceded on the front of it by the pre-central gyrus and it is succeeded on the back by the post-central gyrus. So the pre-central gyrus in the front of the central sulcus, post-central gyrus behind it. These two areas in the brain of the cortex, the human cortex, are the areas that deal with the motor and the sensory function. So everything that is being sensed by you in the body, somatosensory impulses from the fingers, from the face, from the toes, different parts of your body, those impulses are carried to this part, the post-central gyrus, and every motor impulse that is sent from here, from that motor area, the pre-central gyrus, that is the impulse that then comes down. So if you want to wiggle your finger or you want to wiggle your toes, the impulse for that has to come from that motor cortical area. So each of these is represented in a very beautiful manner. So if you look at it, the feet are sort of at the top. And in that gap between the right and left hemispheres is where the genitalia are represented. Then you have the feet, the torso and the arms which have a very, very small representation. Your hands which have a huge representation and then a very huge representation for the face, the eyes, the nose and the mouth. Especially the mouth and the tongue, amazing representation is there. So if you look at this representation in the sensory motor cortex, both the somatosensory area and the motor area, you will find that it is not really proportional to how our body is. And so if you look at this homunculus, it's quite a funny creature because you'll see that the hands are huge, the genitalia are quite big, the face is quite good, and then the lips especially are huge. So this homunculus is actually disproportionate because the areas of the body are not represented in a proportional manner. Why it is so is you don't really have to do much with your trunk or the main part of your limbs, but with your fingers you have to do a lot. And that is why the fingers are given such an amazing representation in both the sensory and the motor cortex. Similarly, your face, the amazing sensations that are there in your face where even a small pimple seems like it is a big mountain, that is because of the sensory area taken up by it and all the facial expressions we can make are because the motor area has such a good representation. This is why in yoga, when we are doing the mudras, we are actually doing something amazing because the area represented is huge. And whenever we are doing the pranayama and all the practices, the trataka with the eyes, the alternate nostril breathing and the practices using the mouth, for example, the kaki mudra or the sadanta in the uh, Shitkari, Sitali, Pranayama, etc. All of this, we are actually using areas that are very heavily represented in the somato, sensory and motor cortical areas. Today, the aim of this talk is actually to give us an idea how cross connections can happen between the right and the left hemispheres. The right 
hemisphere, which is often called the right brain, the left hemisphere, the left brain, are quite different in the way they function. Quantitative aspects are more left brain, qualitative aspects are more right brain. The right brain governs the left side of the body and the left brain the right side of the body. So keeping this basic neuroanatomy and physiology in mind, we can look at how in the different yoga practices, what we are doing is we are bringing together different parts of the body. So you can imagine, now say this is your right brain and this is your left brain, okay? We will use that as an example here. So you have the right and you have the left. This is just to give you a sense of knowing where we are and what we are doing. Now, suppose I am taking my right hand. So my right hand is represented on the left side, okay? I am taking my right hand and that right hand is being connected to my knee. Now what, what happens is my right hand is being connected to my knee. So here, even if I am doing the same side, right hand to right knee, what I am doing is I am creating a connection here. Now this is a connection because the neurons here are going to be firing simultaneously with the neurons here. And if I do it on the left, it is the same type of connection happening. But imagine I bring my left hand to my right knee. What I am doing? A connection between here and here. Or say I am using, I am taking my hand in the Pada Hasta or Hasta Pada and I am bringing my hands and connecting them to the feet. You are connecting this and this. You are connecting this and this. And say the Baddha Kona where you bring both feet together, both the soles are together. So this is being connected. And then if I bring my right hand and catch hold of my left ankle, left hand to the right ankle, what I am doing is I am creating a cross connection between these. And so you are creating this amazing connection across the brain between the right and left hemispheres. The somatosensory and motor areas on the right and the left having this cross connection because all these neurons are firing at the same time. Now what happens if you bring your face down to your knee as we do in our Samasthiti group of asanas where when we do the Prasarita Uttana asana what we are doing is bringing the face down to the knee. So now the face is getting connected to the knee. When you do the Brahmari Pranayama and use the Shanmukhi Mudra, you are connecting the hands, the fingers with different parts of your face. Amazing cross connections being made when you do Dhanurasana. And imagine when you do the Garudasana and you twist yourself all up. Imagine the type of interconnectivity, integration that is happening at the neuronal level. And it's quite amazing when you think about all these practices. In the Vrikshasana, the tree posture, when the right foot is brought to the left thigh and then you are stretching up. Imagine the amazing stuff that can happen and you don't have to do something very complicated. All you have to do is you have to bring both your hands together in the Namaskar Mudra. Now what is happening? This corner and this corner, two corners two opposite divergent corners of your brain are actually having to fire. The neurons are firing at the same time in an integrated manner. And this is why every one of the Hatha Yoga techniques, all the asanas, the mudras especially that we are using, they are not just simple physical exercises. They are not just physical techniques because when you do the physical technique at the body level, you are influencing the way the neurons are firing in your somatosensory area by your experiential awareness of what's happening and in the motor area by a conscious use of that body part. So the conscious use of a body part, I am deciding to take my right hand and connect it with my left hand. Now the motor area is having to fire and when I connect it, the sensation happening on the left hand and the right hand is being fired by the neurons in the somatosensory area. 
So it's amazing what's happening with even the simplest of practices. And in South India, we have what is called the Thopu Karanam, where the right hand is connected to the left ear lobe, left hand to the right ear lobe, and then the person goes down and up. Nowadays, people are using it as super brain yoga, and you have to pay a lot of money for it. Well, yoga is the do-it-yourself kit. So you don't have to pay someone to do it for you. You can do it. But imagine, you are connecting your right hand with the opposite ear, left hand with the opposite ear. Imagine the type of cross connections happening at that moment across your brain. No wonder we say that doing this, or even the knocking of the head which we do for Ganesha, when we are worshipping Ganesha, we knock the head on opposite side and then we do this. No wonder Ganesha helps you think better, study better, and makes you a bit more intelligent than you were before you did that. Because all these neurons are firing, and the more the neurons fire together, the more they wire together. The neurons that fire together, they wire together, and this is the trick of neoplasticity. And how are you doing it? Nobody is doing it for you. No chemical is doing it for you. No external apparatus is doing it for you. You are doing it for yourself. And so it is self-directed neuroplasticity. Keep that in mind. Self-directed neuroplasticity is happening. Every time you do these Hatha Yoga practices, the asanas, the pranayamas, the mudras, all of them are helping a state of integration to happen across the brains so that the right brain knows what's happening in the left and the left knows what's happening in the brain on the other side and the somatosensory area and the motor area are starting to work together much much better this is where equanimity occurs this is where equipoise occurs this is where that harmonious state of balance Samatvam, a state where then the salutogenic potential of health, wellness, well-being and happiness can manifest in our life. This is why every technique we do in yoga is somatopsychic. You are using the body to influence something higher. And as we use the body to influence the brain, that is going to influence the way we think and that is going to influence the way we feel and that is going to influence the way we relate with others. So physical health, mental health, emotional health, social health and ultimately spiritual health manifest. I hope this will give you a new dimension to the next time you put your hands together to say Namaste or you do any of these practices. So connecting my right hemisphere with my left the somatosensory and motor areas on the right with the left. I say thank you to you with a namaste.